welcome back to her Gypsy Soul podcast, The Stories That Bind Us. My name is Jacqueline Van Bierk. I am your host. I am a singer, songwriter, I'm an artist, I'm a music composer and producer and a lover of life. I love talking to people, having conversations. We all have so many stories that I believe it's our duty to share with one another because we are so much more alike than we are different. And I keep saying that over and over again because it is true. And I believe that in this day and age we live in, it is more and more important to find like-minded individuals and to build a community around people who have similar goals and dreams and ambitions to lift one another up and inspire, motivate and empower one another. Um, so it's always my goal for you to hopefully connect with one of my guests and maybe collaborate with them, work with them uh, and become friends, you know, because this is what this is all about, to bring people together. So I am super excited about today's guest. She's one of my collaborators. She's a super talented girl, um, singer, songwriter, vocal coach as well. Um, her name is Melly. Malavazi and I have to look at her name to not butcher it because I'm known for doing that. <laughs> Meli Malavasi. She's so talented. So with no further ado, here's Meli. Hi Meli, how are you? Good. How are you, Jacqueline? So good. It's so good to see you and to talk to you today. You are such an amazing person and you're so talented. Um singer, songwriter, do you compose as well? Yes, yeah, I do. You know, mm -hmm. use also, so you, you're so multi-talented. And um, I, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you because, you know, we're all online now. And uh, in a way, this is not a bad thing, right? <laughs> we're embracing the change. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You are originally from Costa Rica, which is, it. this is so on my bucket list. So if you want to Tell us a little bit about Costa Rica, if you don't mind. And I would really love to share your story about um, how your journey has been as a musician in Costa Rica, then coming to LA, um, just taking a leap, you know, and yeah, it seems like it was the right choice for you to do, you know, with everything you've accomplished so far. So I'll give it to you and sharing your story as in your music career and up until now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I feel very blessed to be here in LA. Um, but first I'll talk about Costa Rica. Um, I feel like Costa Rica is one of those places where uh, it's like a musical bridge, you know, like you have a lot of influences from Europe, you have a lot of influences from, um, from, I mean, from Costa Rica, which is mainly like Spanish music. Uh, but also, I mean, we do have lots of music from America and I think growing up with all those influences it was uh it was very nice I really really enjoyed it I uh my family had still has a carnival so that's that's what my dad does for a living and I remember traveling with all my family we're four sisters in, in total and with my mom. And we used to travel around different little towns and he used to put, you know, the Ferris wheel and like the bumper cars and like all this cool stuff. And uh, and it was an amazing childhood. Like I, I couldn't have wished for something better, honestly. I feel like we were traveling and we were listening to music and we were working and we were like <clears throat> meeting new places uh, along the way and meeting new friends and it it was amazing so i think everything started there i started getting that itch since i was very young probably four or five and and so my mom recognized that and she was like well let's put her in piano lessons you know and so from there it kind of the, the love for music started from there and I uh, yeah that was I, I think I was like four or five and then ever since that that day I started just playing lots of piano and then I went ahead 
and started composing like melodies in my head. I didn't know really what I was doing, honestly. I was just like, this sounds cool. And I'm just going to sing whatever line. And at that point, you know, you go through um, your teenage years. So you don't want to tell anything to your mom and dad. So you will uh, <laughs> tell everything to the song. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so it, it was very fun. I feel like it was the best therapy I could ever, you know, had still is to this point um and then from there i started getting into bands uh my first band was like a punk rock band and then from there it was like the no doubt era so i was like super influenced by by her gwen stefani and from there it, it kind of grew into like a ska band and then i felt like i hit like a ceiling we even opened for the Misfits. It was crazy. What? That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah, we opened for the Misfits and and we had like a contract with Converse. It was it was a big deal back home. And so wow. and so from there, it kind of grew into really nothing. So I was just feeling kind of stuck. And I'm like, well, I think I made it here. So what else can I do? You know, and I started, it was the time where I was uh, started looking for, for different music schools and colleges. Cause my first reaction was not to study music. It was, I'm actually, I have a bachelor's in design. So, um, I am a designer first. And then I, I, you know, I'm like, this doesn't fill my heart. I need something else. And so I, I gave it a try and, you know, and then from there I took the leap and here we are in LA. Right. Um, I came here like 10 years ago or so. So it was very, it was a scary jump, but I thought uh, it was the obvious, you know, decision to yeah. do at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's so important that when we feel that urge, to just take the leap. If, you, if your intuition tells you, go, you just got to go. Because the worst that could happen is nothing happens and you go back. Yes. It, it, it's, I, I can't even imagine people that may have had that feeling but didn't follow through. And now they're on that deathbed thinking, oh, I wish I would have tried. You know what I mean? Okay, of course. It's so important to at least go for it. So you came to LA. I mean, that's already such great accomplishment. And you're such a gypsy too. You know, you, you just... <laughs> traveling around and just like a free spirit doing just following your heart which I think is like so essential you know yeah we have to use our brain too but I, you know you got to follow your gut and your passion and your calling um when you came to LA so you came pretty much with nothing by yourself or um no I actually came with uh with my sister she studied she was accepted probably a few months before to acting school and so she came in and study uh, acting and then and then I was like well I want to try you know <laughs> and she she inspired me a lot and and so here we are yeah we came together we stayed at this this little apartment in Pasadena which she still lives there at this point you know it, it was it's a historic apartment and um yeah, and so it was it was good because I wasn't alone per se. I had her as my support and we were in it together and we started to know each other more and it was it was a fun thing to do with, you know, with a family member for sure. Yeah, yeah. Where did you go from there? Because now you are a very well and I, you're also a really great performer. Like I can tell, like we are very much alike in that sense. Like I saw you and I'm like, oh my God, that's my girl. Like she's all in you know I love that like I there's not there's a lot of great singers but there's not a lot of great performers I feel you know so it's really important to when you are on stage and you're doing a thing you just got to go full full in and you you're totally doing that so you started having some bands here or did you jump right into because now you're doing more sync music right you're still an artist yeah. as well but you also work a lot and focus a lot on sync music which I think is super smart um where yeah. has it been you um from you know when you got here like 
Yeah, when I got here, I I was accepted to Los Angeles College of Music, which is in Pasadena. That's the mm -hmm. whole reason why we went there. Yeah. And from there, yeah, I had a couple of bands, you know, a uh, couple of bands in school that was fun. It was like mainly kind of rock bands and because I came from that background. And, and then I, it was more of like, you know, like just hiring people, just singer songwriter, uh, going to coffee shops around Pasadena and performing and eating for free and <laughs> things like that, that were so important. I remember one time my sister and I literally did not have any money to to eat or to buy groceries or anything. And we're like, what can we do? And we were like, well, Pasadena is known for having very nice, uh, you know, shops. Uh, Colorado Boulevard is a beautiful, beautiful street. And we were like, we're just going to go and sing and put our, our hat or something, you know, and and let's give it a try. So we went there and we were like shaking, basically getting there. We had to walk like probably a mile to get there. And then once we we got there, it was like, okay, you ready? And we we're like, yep. So here we go. And so we started singing and playing. And at the beginning, probably the first hour, there wasn't much, you know, um, money coming in or anything. But then there was, I swear, it was an angel that dropped 20 bucks on our hat. And we were like, we have food for the week. Thank God. And so, <laughs> wow. and so we, we always remember that, you know, as, um, as that time of like, it was very hard, but, but we took what we could do. We, we, in somewhere or another shared our gift, um, to continue. And, and sometimes, I mean, that story of like, you know, at the beginning being a starving musician yeah we lived that you know uh but um but after a while those are the things that makes us very strong and those are the things that doesn't let you like you know fall into the shaky ground and things like that because you've been there and because you're ready to you know keep going uh so that was that was it yeah and then after that i i discovered sync because i felt like i was kind of stuck on my artistry i was writing songs in spanish and i spent all this money and this i mean he's an amazing producer and i'm super grateful for this amazing album we created together but it didn't go anywhere because i was naive and i was just thinking Oh, he has connections. Oh, he's going to play for everybody. Oh, he's going to make me famous and all this stuff. And so I just relied too much on that and and nothing happened. So it just taught me a lesson that that's only the beginning. You know, like if you actually want to do something greater, you have to be your own boss. You have to wear all those hats. You have to go and get the opportunities. And And at the beginning, you know, since I grew up thinking, oh, you know, I'm the best in my country. Why wouldn't I get signed to a record label here? Um, well, I get smashed in the face pretty quickly, <laughs> let's see. Um, and then, yeah, I just started getting in sync because I'm like, you know, this could be fun. And and that's when we met. And it was so, so rewarding to have such a strong community. I feel like that's one of the things that I really missed. Or I'm not sure if because I was just so focused on on being so egocentric and just you know chasing my only my dream and my dream and my dream and not being open to anything else when I think the opportunities were like in my in my face all the time and I just didn't see them um but yeah now now we're here and I'm very very happy and very excited yeah I can so relate to that um I spent so much money on an album I mean, looking back, I'm like, what was I thinking, you know? But I think those are the lessons we just, it's, a, it's an expensive lesson. And you think, you know, just because I always laugh now when I see people that have a producer that is like a big name producer, because I've, I've had that. And I was like, you know, it's just a job for them. <laughs> you know, most, I mean, maybe sometimes if you get lucky, the producer will actually push it. But otherwise, and the beautiful thing now is, and you're doing the same thing, we can produce ourselves, right? At some point, you probably thought the same thing I did back then. I was like, oh my God, I'm spending all this money producing. And there is a place and time where you want to have someone else produce, you know? 
But I think it's also very helpful to be able to learn that yourself because then you don't have to rely on other people and you get better. And, and I also think that you don't have to be the best producer because sometimes the things that you just don't know make you very unique because you work with your limitations and that can create this pretty cool sound because yes, you're not that person. Because when you listen to mainstream music, I feel that a lot of songs you can't tell it's the same producers. It sounds like the same mm -hmm. song, different singers, you know, it's the same production. So yeah, I think as indie, but it's definitely harder as an indie artist, you know, and I think oh, yeah. we are smart going the sync route um, and getting exposure that is actually getting paid exposure, <laughs> which is a beautiful thing. Exactly, exactly. And I feel, you know, it, it's not that sync is 100% easy either, no, but I feel like there's more opportunities there. Mm -hmm. And there's a more, I think to me, it's a stronger community that yeah. lives there. Oh, yeah. And, and it's people that actually are working towards the same thing. I feel like there's less room for egos and for like, what do I want? And, and so it's a little easier to work on that. I think, you know, when you're like such a creative at heart that, yeah, I felt that way. Yeah. Absolutely. I felt that in the music um, scene in the live music scene, the band scene, I found that people were actually kind of like very, very competitive. And very, you know, just, just like they're always afraid that somebody will take something from them. And it's like, there's room for everybody. But I felt the same way within the composer community, uh, sync community. Everybody's very much like in it together. You know, it's like, yeah, let's let's collaborate. Let's let's make something happen. And I mean, we are working on uh, with Kate, our, another collaborator. We're working on a badass song that's going to be released hopefully in a, in a month or two. Fire. Uh, you know, and... It's, it's just a smart way, I think, for every musician to just like leverage your talents and your connections and, um, and, and not just like do the one thing, you know, because right now, if you would only be doing the one thing, which is performing, maybe you'd be screwed because nothing has been open, you know, and speaking of quarantine, so we talked about this the other day. Um, so I'm single and I also haven't been stuck in like a little apartment, but I was asking you, I said, so you are married and it's also a great story how you met your husband. I love that. Um, but, you know, I'm like, wow, you guys are still talking because <laughs> it can't be easy to be in quarantine for a long time and you're always together, right? At some point. But tell us how it's affected actually you guys and it's made you, no, you tell me the story. I, I <laughs> Um, it was a fun story. We met at a uh, CD release party that I had. I had a friend of mine that had a an art show and she's like, why don't we do a CD release party in an art show? Let's give it a try. And I'm like, sure, that sounds creative. And so um, we went ahead and do uh, and did that. And I needed an opening band. So she knew this band of four guys. And I was like, that sounds good okay let's do this and so um uh, i i heard i think i heard like 30 seconds of a song that they did and i'm like the guy is in tune yes let's do it <laughs> <laughs> and so that was very important to me and um and so they were badass like i loved i love abner who that's the name of the band and oh. abner who was a badass band and i feel like uh they're still on spotify you guys want to check it out um and i just felt like it was the perfect compliment because i was kind of doing some more pop dance stuff with with some rock tunes not too much but they were 100 percent rock and so it was very fun to to be in that kind of environment and the guitarist was derek which you know caught my eye right away because he was the tallest he was the one that had the curls and he <laughs> was the one you know that was the guitarist you know we have something for guitarists so <laughs> um so that uh so he he was great and so I wasn't necessarily looking for anything at that moment I remember I just broken up with my other boyfriend so I was like I don't want to see guys I don't like guys I hate guys I na 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 you know all that female thing um which is I feel normal to feel so that day nothing really happened but then our friend that did the the show 
basically called us for a July the 4th bar like barbecue kind of stuff and I was like well okay I don't need me but I'm still gonna go and see what's up and and they went all the band went there and and that's where it started we started talking we started you know sharing information we started just noticing out of nowhere that we had so many coincidences like it was to a point where I'm like are you my brother this is weird I don't understand you know it was very 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 so many coincidences so quick we like the same games we, we like the same movies um we like to go and you know had I don't know coffee somewhere I mean I, I'm a tea person but I I still like to go to coffee shops and um and so from there yeah and from there it grew and it was it was incredible and we're still together and quarantine was definitely a challenge at the beginning I feel like for any person who's um whose routine gets broken it's it's very difficult you know you are just like thinking okay I have to deal with myself first of all I'm freaking out and then I have to deal with the fact that I don't have any more gigs that can pay me what am I gonna do and then I have to deal with the fact that my husband is with me almost like 24 hours a day working from home too and I just had the the advantage that I'm a, a music teacher, a vocal coach. And so I already kind of had that on the side, like I was already doing that. So it wasn't like I was left on the street 100%. So that was a good thing. Oh, so you already did like online lessons before? Yeah, before okay. that, like probably two years before I was just okay. already doing online lessons and doing YouTube videos and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um and so, yeah, when, when that hit, actually, it was better for me because everybody was stuck home and everybody wanted to take lessons. So I'm like, sure, let's do this. And uh, it was just good timing and good, good thinking, I guess. I don't know. It wasn't me, really. Um, it was more from up above than, than anything else. Um, and so, yeah, I was sorry. I'm going around so much. Uh, basically, I am. We, we definitely had a lot of. I guess pretty pretty grown up talks, you know, like uh, like you know about little things that maybe bothered us or whatever, and then from there it just became like, oh my god, now big things bother us, and how what are we gonna do? So I feel like in this year we have grown so much as a couple to the point where our connection has increased, like like very exponentially. It, our connection is better and our communication is much better. He's very good at communicating whenever something bothers him. So I've, I have learned from that. I, I am a songwriter, so I don't say my, you know, I don't say my emotions. I write them. Right. So, but at some point or another, you have to kind of come out of that thing and that cocoon and then just try to be a butterfly, you know? <laughs> and, um, and so, we are in a very good place right now. I feel like every time that we discuss something and something goes wrong or whatever, we we are immediately like, what do you mean? Let's talk about this, you know? Let's not leave this and let's not like run from it because I used to be the one who's like, the second that things weren't going my way, I would like shut the door or go for a run or do anything except facing the problem because it was easier just to run away, you know, but then you're faced with the situation where you can't run away or the virus is going to eat you basically. So, uh, you, you did had to, um, had to, you know, be a grown up and definitely put, put yourself at the same level as your parent, as your couple, you know, because, because you're a team, it's not, nobody's bigger than anybody. And, and you guys have to work together, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel communication is so important in any relationship. And I'm always really a little bit upset that so very few people are willing to communicate, you know. Um, it, it, I mean, like what you were saying, most people, the minute there's a little bit of an issue, they just run or they just disappear. Uh, versus like, okay, well, let's have a talk, you know, what's bugging you? Because I think people would get, and, 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 
especially in this kind of climate we're in right now, if we could just talk a little bit more and have more conversations, open conversations without, you know, like what you were saying, being on the same level, right? I'm not better than you. I'm not smarter than you. I'm not whatever, more privileged than you. I'm just, we're on the same level. Let's just talk about what's bothering you and how we can work it out. And that's, that's, that's amazing. That's a very rare thing, I think, in a relationship. And I think that's, besides money, probably the, the other biggest killer in a relationship, communication. Yeah, totally. You know? Especially in such a big city like LA, I feel like people are not willing to give any of those two up yeah. for, for any other reason than themselves or like, like an emergency or like something like that, you know, I feel like you have to have a very strong foundation to recognize that. And most of us, you know, um, most people didn't grow up with that. Yeah. So, so it's kind of hard to recognize by yourself, but, but, you know, I do, I do know that it, this relationship would have never worked if it wasn't for the fact that we have somebody in between us and we do believe in God a lot. And, and God is definitely the one that is guiding the ship. Um, we do believe in, you know, in a higher power. And, and sometimes when we can't really talk about it or when we are too stuck in ourselves, we just really pray that we have the, the necessary words or the ra or correct words to actually say the things that we want to say and not the things that that your heart wants to you know um heart or lash onto the other person because i have definitely learned with you know with time that the things that you say to somebody are very delicate and they and it can mark them for the rest of your life so you just you know have to make sure that if you're if you're going to say it then think about it very well, even though your heart might be boiling, even though you might want to kill somebody at that point, like maybe take a breather and maybe go for a walk if you can, or I don't know, put on your favorite song or something that, that gets you out of that uncomfortable place. And then from there, you, you'll be able to, to make a better decision because you're being more of yourself, you know? Yeah. Cool off. So important. You know, I, I feel like I call them like the trigger, the keyboard trigger happy people that just like the minute they see something, they just have to like jump on and start arguing or replying. Instead, it's like, don't just let it go first. And then if you still feel strongly about having to express yourself, <laughs> maybe use DM <laughs> or maybe just, you know, um, think eloquently about it first uh, maybe write it out first and before just writing on it's just crazy you know and it, it, we live in this time where everything is so instant and everything is so instant gratification but also instant i think um what's the word i'm looking for what you were saying it can be really hurtful and it's hard to yeah. take it back because when you are i saw this um this video short video somewhere it was like two dogs they were like um between if there was a fence between them and they were like barking and like snarling and showing teeth and then the fence opened and they just stared at each other like hey what's up and i feel that's like the fence closed is like on the internet where people just like ah if they would be in person they'd be like uh, maybe i don't really like you but i'm not gonna attack you you know it's, it's not it's almost like <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's we have a lot we have a long way to go, I think, as humans, but I love that you're saying that because people need to hear that and people need to really be a bit more, all of us, I mean, we all do, because we're emotional beings, we can't help it sometimes, like you said, you're boiling hard, right? I, that's another great thing, us being songwriters is, it's like, if I'm really pissed off, if I'm really angry or sad, just sit down and write a song about it, you know? I mean, look at Adele, right? It worked for her. <laughs> totally totally you know mm -hmm. yeah i love it i love it i feel like we have to definitely take that into our advantage yeah for sure <laughs> those yeah. are the best songs <laughs> and you have a channel to have a channel to channel it because uh, if a you you blow up on someone that's not good for the other person or for your relationship might even not be good for your overall um image you know um, but also for your health 
because if you you know if you don't do that and you just eat it and you keep it all internally eventually you're going to explode you know and that's i think also another issue that we all currently dealing with you know mm -hmm. the mental health mm -hmm. issue. and so I, I feel that's very important what do you do so you're also a, a coach and you're super busy what do you do to keep yourself healthy and and active during this kind of a little bit more slowed down time are you actually enjoying it I mean, it does probably slow down for you, right? <laughs> Other than not as many networking things, but what ha what has been like the most um, change? I don't know if you've gone to the gym before, if you you know do meditation, yoga, whatever you're doing. What has changed, or what have you added to your daily routines? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like at the beginning, when I was getting into this crazy ride it was very hard for me to like stay balanced starting with the fact that you know when you're when I was in my 20s uh, now I'm in my 30s so like I was in my 20s and and I um, I was still finding myself I was still like figuring things out and I was not eating correctly as well so like that also affected a lot of like how I would think towards things I don't think I made the correct decisions because when you don't have you know, food in your stomach, you probably are more, you know, uh, tend to explode more and you tend to, uh, to be meaner. And, and that's not necessarily who you are, but it's just like, you're like, no, I want to, I want to be skinny. I want to drop 10 pounds tomorrow. And I want to do this and all this crazy stuff that it's like, oh gosh. But, um, you know, what has helped me is, this is something that I actually learned from Derek, from my husband, and that is to plan ahead, to plan ahead, because I feel like my, my way of life is very pura vida. It's like, every, I'll do it tomorrow. It'll be, you know, we have Costa Rica saying that pura vida saying is like, you know, like, uh, enjoy your life, um, you know, peace and love, kind of that, that same situation. And everybody's very like chill in that sense. Um, but that you know that doesn't get stuff done yeah. and so uh so there's a balance between being pura vida and and between being you know um productive yeah. so so there's definitely the planning part so what i normally do is i sit down on sundays which i give myself sundays always i don't work i don't teach I don't do anything on Sundays except being a complete vegetable. And if I'm losing my mind, I go for a run to like release some of that, you know, stress, anxiety of doing something because, and I try not to look at my phone too. It's almost like I'm going to read that day, you know? I and so um, I love the artist way. That's what I'm reading now. <laughs> oh my God. What chapter are you on? I think I'm in chapter number five. Wow. Uh, I need to redo that book. Yeah, I love that book. I think that should be like the artist Bible, not not even an artist, anybody's Bible. Yeah. Because that balance, because we're all creative people, you know, and some people think they are not, but they are. And yes, oh, I love the artist dates. And I, I haven't done the morning pages in a long time. Yes, me too. I must say that, you know, not as often, but whenever I feel like I need to, I need guidance in something, then I write it down. And then the next day I can find the answers. It's so weird. So, so strange how that works, but it's so effective. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has helped me a lot. Just, you know, leaving the Sundays by themselves, um, trying to relax, trying to cook. You know, if I didn't know that I like to cook, but I think I do. I'm a vegan. So I, I like to do things that are healthy for me. Yay, vegan power. Um, and, and I like to, you know, explore different things, you know, I like to do that. And then what else do I do to chill? Definitely. I, I made it, I make it a priority for my husband and I, because we have very busy schedules to go Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays to run and to do exercise for one hour, like no less one hour every morning. It, even though we cry, even though we don't want to, you know, get up because it's raining. Well, that day we didn't get up. But, um, you know, normally if something like rain arises, then we'll do yoga or something like that, you know. And yeah, sometimes I do yoga. I like yoga too. It's very nice. It's very calming to the mind. I'm, 
I like meditating. I'm not that good at that, I think, just because I prefer active things. Um, but that would be what I do. Yeah. So just plan ahead and physical activity and give myself one day of like vegetable state, you know, don't do anything. I love that. Yeah. I, I like to take Sundays too. Where I'm like, I normally, I cook a lot and honestly, us being vegan, um, I call myself like the part-time vegan. And when I say part-time vegan, once in a while, I'll have like a little pastry or something, you know, where I'm, I'm trying not to do that anymore though, actually, um, because there's a huge difference. And I would love to, for you to talk about that as well, because there's a huge difference between being a vegan, a healthy vegan and an unhealthy vegan, because <laughs> a lot of vegan food is actually not necessarily healthy. You know, people right. think, oh, I'm vegan. Uh, it says, we, well, yeah, look at the sugar, you know, that it's not that healthy. Um, but man, I get a little bit bored of cooking sometimes because I feel like, oh, what else should I do? But at the same time, I guess we are lucky because I really love vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people who don't like vegetables, which I cannot even relate to. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my God, how could you not like vegetables? But um, so I find it interesting because it's so, you can get so creative, you know, mm -hmm. Sometimes I just throw things in and mix them up and it's like, oh shoot, this is like really delicious, you know? Yeah. But don't you feel like the same way, like with, with vegan, like it's just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. You have to be really careful that you eat the right stuff. What's your, what's, what's one of your favorite vegan recipes that you would recommend where people always think that vegan is a expensive, which is actually not true. Um, and also they, they feel, my mom always tells me, oh, I, I can't eat salad all day long and I'm like that's not what vegans do <laughs> no not at all yeah 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 um I love soups I, I think soups is one of my favorite things to cook and it's just easy and fast and nutritious and full of deliciousness inside and you know I, I put sometimes like um like a minestrone soup so I would put like potatoes and I would put kale and I would put um, it's all about it, you know, the difference for your food to taste amazing is in the spices, what spices to put in. And if you don't know, you can Google it, you know, like what spices would go in a minestrone soup. Yes. And, um, and then, you know, delicious. I really, I really, really enjoy cooking that because I feel like that fills me up and that makes me, at least now that it's a little colder outside, it makes me feel warm and and stuff like that. And for summer, I love quinoa tacos. So basically I cook quinoa, which is, well, a delicious um, uh, seed, right? That you, you know, you can eat with anything. It's almost like a replacement for, for rice. And so um, quinoa tacos, so quinoa, and then I'm, I put, you know, some onion and I put some uh, some vegetables like uh, like garlic. Well, that's more like a like a spice, but you know, garlic. And I will put mash black beans on top of that, and kind of like just fold everything. You know, just make it one big paste. <laughs> and then you put also like um, like other yeah, you put other spices at the end. But it's so yummy and it's so easy to do. And I actually have two cookbooks, which I don't remember exactly what they're called, but I will get back to you with that information. <laughs> and and they're, they're those types of books. First of all, the guy's hilarious because he curses a lot during the book. Yeah. Um, and it's just his way of like narrating. So it's just already interesting. And then from there, he kind of uses very similar ingredients for everything he does. So it's not like you have to buy a, a bunch of stuff to yeah. do this little salad, you know? It's, these ingredients are the base of everything that he does. And it's so easy just for you to say, okay, this day I'm feeling this, this day I'm feeling that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, oh God, I live for that. And people always think that it's a salad is not filling, a salad is very filling. And I love to put like blueberries and strawberries in my salad mm. and some seeds and nuts. It's just like, oh my God, it's so satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> healthy for us. I totally feel the difference. Like I can't even, I mean, 
I used to, have you ever eaten meat or did you grow up? Uh, have you always been? No, I did grow up eating meat yeah. and yeah, it was, I think when I, when I moved here, um, on the fifth year or so that I was staying here, I became vegan, mm -hmm. but, um, that was just like a personal, personal, I'm going to put, you know, my, my little grant of saying in the world and help if I can do that with animal cruelty and with, you know, climate change and with all this stuff that I'm like, well, if I can do it and if I can actually change that, I think not only I will feel better, but which I do, by the way, ever since I did that change, I mean, I felt so energetic, as you can see, I don't stop. So I feel so energetic. There's not, there's never a time where in the afternoon I feel sluggish per se. Um, I, I always feel like I, I do have energy and and uh and happy i'm i feel happy so that's another thing that that type of food creates for me absolutely you know at some point you don't even crave all that crazy stuff anymore like i used to crave cheese when i first quit you know and now i'm like ew no i don't like it anymore like at all it tastes nasty actually um same with meat like i mean once in a while I would have some fish, I would have salmon and I haven't had it in like a month now, but like I, I did, I did have that. I have to admit that. Um, but overall I feel that, and for me, it was the same thing. I did it for the animals. I didn't really do it for myself. I was just like, you know, what's kind of gross when you see what happens to the animals. It's, mm -hmm. it's so cruel. And when people talk about, you know, violence, that is very violent what they do. to yeah. animals, And that's just like, one little thing that we can do. And in this day and age, even products, there's so many amazing cruelty-free products on the market that are really, really good and not more expensive. So it's it's worth, you know, contributing and doing something nice, not just for our own bodies, because, right, it's what yeah. goes inside your body is pretty important because that is that is your house. You know, you right. want to keep your house clean. Um but also what you put on your body, you know, because people put all these creams, they don't even read what's in it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what you put on your skin that goes into your body, it, it absorbs. So it's super important, you know, to not have all these chemicals um, in your body. Totally. I agree. Those are things that we don't see every day, but it's definitely like amazing. I actually wear like a lotion for the face that you know, I see one wrinkle and then I put that the night before and then it's gone. It's like amazing. So I'm going to share it with you. Wait, let's see which one. Does. We all want to know. <laughs> I have it here. One second. Yes. Guys, this is gold right here. This is worth waiting for. I think it's called um, Clary Balm, Clary Balm Collection. And it's from this independent girl from Nashville. It has olive oil, calendula, lavender, you know, plantain, chamomile. This one does have beeswax, so it's not beeswax, so it's not 100%, but um, but this is, you know, it's just amazing. It was, it's my savior every night. That's the only thing I wear. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I actually use uh, uh, coconut oil. The only thing oh. I do like is like my hair looks a little greasy after a while because I put it on my face at night. And I'm like, oh my God, I just washed my hands. But I love it. You know, it's like this, the, the, the cos cosmetic industry is like, so it's really expensive. Like those, some of those anti-aging creams, you know, and you, you spend like a hundred dollars on it and you're like, um, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Again, right. It's also what you put in your body because if you smoke a lot and you drink yeah, 20 cups of coffee, yeah. and don't drink any water and don't eat any nutritious food, then, you know, that will show in your, in your body, um, in your, in your skin. Thank you for the tip. I'm going to look that up for sure. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All about that. Where can people find you? Yeah, sure. They can just go to my website, Meli Malavasi, M-A-L-A-V-A-S-I. That's Malavasi. Um, Dot com and you can find me there i have all my music there or you can find me on instagram facebook meli malavasi meli is m-e-l-i also for yeah. your questions right sorry 
also for the voice lessons, everything, all the information. Oh, and for the voice lessons, thanks for reminding me. Uh, for the voice lessons, they can go to mellymusiclessons.com. Mellymusiclessons.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I um, you know, I always love talking to other vocal coaches because I'm a coach too. And I think that when people ask me, like, um, you know, I want to find like an online program, which I think is good. But I think that um, it's always good to have a coach and to also try different coaches because, mm -hmm. you know, not every coach could be the best coach in the world, but it could not be the coach for you. <laughs> I mean, so I always recommend like try different coaches and see what you can get from them. And if you really vibe with that person, go stick with them. And if you feel it's not the right person for you, then move on to someone else, you know? Um, and at the same time, I, I'm sure you agree with me too. I've had students who, got, who were so confused because there, there are some teachers who are very technical, which yeah. it's not really my approach because mm -hmm. I think you're too technical. Yeah. You're too, way too much in your head, you know? And it, it exactly. Becomes, you're not even doing what you really want to do is sing effortlessly. And what you're doing is you're trying to figure out what's going on in there, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you can't do both. Um, and that can be dangerous because then you're just like trying to figure out, oh, this coach said that and this coach said that and I'm confused, you know, I feel you have to go with your with your gut and where you're really seeing results versus mm -hmm. um, just, you know, being more confused, right? Totally. I agree 100% with that. Yeah. It's good to have information, but make sure that it's the right information that you feel in your body that feels good. Mm -hmm. because sometimes you would sacrifice everything to just learn quickly and you know and do the wrong thing and then your vo your voice is going to pay that price later on so just be careful with that yeah exactly would you agree with me me as a coach i always tell everybody that everybody can sing it may just take for some way way more and longer time and effort than others right because i think some people are just born amazing singers yeah. You know, they just <laughs> I don't think Christina Aguilera had to work really hard you know <laughs> yeah I think some people definitely are born with more flexible vocal cords that allow them to you know to just stretch more and 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 with amazing pitch and with excellent ears and you know all that is important but I also believe that, you know, you can definitely get there with a lot more work, but you can definitely get there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any last words for our listeners? Uh, any advice and what's on the horizon for you? Do uh, you have anything new music coming up besides our track, which is going to be called Unbreakable. And that's going Woo! to be coming out soon. Um, but we don't have a date yet. We should probably like pick a date. You know, like I feel like whenever you have a date, it's like, commitment you know that's it like that sounds great that happen i um, yeah you know but anything like your, your solo stuff anything coming out soon that we should look out for um for now i think i'm i'm focusing a lot on producing music i don't have anything scheduled to come out per se mm -hmm. but i am you know just focusing on on bettering my craft and you, you know, sometimes it just comes out of nowhere, right? You're like, oh, I think I can release this song now because I've been working so much on so many songs that it's like, okay, well, let's try this one. <laughs> um, so maybe like an 80s, 80s inspired song that I've been doing with another producer. And I feel like um, it, it, could be a, it could be a great track. I think that might be my next one. Um, and for now, yeah, just focusing on that and on the horizon, I would love to, um, you know, to have like a publishing deal or something like that, where I can like focus on on writing for for sync and and write with the team. I think that's what I want to do. And and I think I'm getting closer. I think I'm doing my research and I I think I'm I'm excited about what's coming. And so awesome uh don't have anything said yet but i i feel it coming feel it coming <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and uh, any last advice i would just say enjoy each day like if it was your last because you just never know when you're gonna go just never know so enjoy your day 
if that's the the day that you decide, hey, I wanna I wanna try to start singing or I wanna try to start producing music, just do it. You know, if it's in your heart, go for it. You know. I love that. It's so true because people put things off and they say one day when I have time, when I have the money, when I have the right person, then I'm going to do that. And it's like that day may never come. Mm -hmm. you might as well start now. If you wanted to sing and you a year from now, you would have, you know, started <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or a year be earlier, you would have started, you would have already had a year under your belt, you know? So I think that, yeah, I love that advice. It's so, so true. So I will make sure that all your info is um, in the description below so people can find you for voice lessons or for collaborations, for licensing opportunities. And yay! <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for your time and for this, you know, the stories that that uh, bind us because I feel like I, um, <clears throat> I love stories, first of all. So this was very awesome for you to do this. And and to have me here and you're just such an amazing soul that that people people deserve to hear more about you as well so thank, thank you so much for for this beautiful time oh thank you thank you so much we'll talk very soon <laughs> all right sounds bye. great bye bye <laughs> thank you so much for listening to the podcast i know you have a lot of other things to choose from and for you to take the time out of your busy schedule um, by having all these other options staying here with us and listening to our conversation I really highly appreciate that if you liked what you heard please subscribe please hit the like button and please share it with your friends if you got something out of it also don't be afraid to reach out to my guests and uh, I will talk to you next week and as always you're going to hear a track of mine at the end of this and you can purchase my music autosdaughter.com or jacquelinevanbierk.com and you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. I am all over the place and I would love to connect with you. Thank you for listening and you have an amazing, fantastic evening, day, morning, week, year, life. Love you guys. By the way, guys, if you love the top I'm wearing, this is for my Jack Van B clothing line and this is the apocalyptic hoodie top which is like an inked hoodie top it's the more crazy this the crazy air version of the a bit more toned down version which is also really awesome um it protects you from the sun while you're out and about while you're not sweating your ass off because the arms are free which is so awesome and right now in the evening it is really great to keep you like nice and cozy because if it's a little, a little bit chilly, this will definitely keep you cozy. Or if you're like in an air conditioned room, like a studio or something like that, this is really, really help. The material is so soft. Honestly, you just want to sleep with it. The material is really, really soft. It's just so cozy. But you can also wear it over a long sleeve shirt, which I've done, um, which looks also super cool, especially if it's like one color. Um, so you can get that on my website, jackvanb.com. I also have some t-shirts and some jewelry. You support a small business and these are all handmade by me. There's each piece is absolutely unique, one of a kind. None, there's none to the alike at all. So that's another really cool thing, unique, just like you. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast and I'll talk to you. your playground wanna get down into danger zone I'll take your throne all you see is glittery but you don't
Thank you.